In this topic, we're going to look at enzymes and penicillin in industry. So by the end of this topic, you'll know what are fermenters and how they're used in industry. What is penicillin and how is it made? How are enzymes used in making fruit juice, baby food, corn syrup, biological washing powders, tanning leather, and how are enzymes used in seed germination? Now sometimes it's easier to use a microorganism to manufacture the enzyme that we want. The microorganisms produce many different enzymes. And the microorganisms are grown in a large stainless steel vat called a fermenter. The microorganisms include bacteria and microscopic fungi. So have a look at this fermenter. Some fermenters can hold over 500,000 litres of fermenting mixture. The conditions within these huge tanks are controlled. So we're going to have a look at the production of the antibiotic penicillin to see how these fermenters work. So what is penicillin? Penicillin is an antibiotic made by the fungi or fungi called penicillium. The fungus is grown in fermenters. Now note penicillin is not made by an enzyme, it's not an enzyme. But this topic, penicillin, does tie in nicely because like enzymes, it's produced using fermenters. So this is a fermenter and it's made of stainless steel. It's sterilized before filling it with a mixture that contains the required nutrients. So these nutrients include sugars, ammonium salts, and then you add the fungus penicillium. The fungus grows well in the conditions inside the fermenter. So what do these nutrients provide? Well, the sugars provide energy for respiration and the ammonium salts are used by the fungus to make proteins. After a few days, the fungus starts to produce penicillin, which then accumulates in the fermenter. So let's have a look at the different parts of the fermenter. You need to label these in your notes. So label the purple words as we go through it step by step. So the first one is you have a stirrer with paddles. These keep the microorganisms suspended and ensure that they've got access to the nutrients and oxygen. Then you've got the probes. These monitor the pH, oxygen and temperature. And if you have a look at the bottom of the fermenter, coming into the fermenter you've got an air supply. This provides oxygen for aerobic respiration of the fungus. Surrounding the fermenter you've got a water-cooled jacket. This removes any excess heat produced and it keeps the fermenter at a constant temperature of about 24 degrees Celsius. So after about six days, the mixtures drain. So the fungus has made penicillin and we drain off the mixture and then the next step is we filter it and then the penicillin is extracted. So have a look here. The drain mixture is filtered and the microorganisms accumulate at the top of the filter. The filtrate comes through and we purify this, use the penicillin and use it for marketing. So a few questions. What is penicillin? What is the fungus called that makes penicillin? How is penicillin made? What are two nutrients added to the fermenter? And what three things must be monitored by the probes? Moving on to enzymes in the food industry. You've got pectinase. Pectinase breaks down pectin, as the name suggests, in apple cell walls and enables greater juice extraction. So if you mix pectinase and amylase, it's going to make the fruit juice clear. Lactase breaks down lactose in milk into glucose and galactose. So this makes milk drinkable for lactose intolerant people. You've got amylase, 
which is used to digest starch and convert it into corn syrup. And protease breaks down proteins into polypeptides in baby food. This makes it easier for the babies to digest the food. And pepsin is used in tanning leather. So what it does is it removes some of the flesh and softens the leather. So let's see how much you remember. What enzyme is used to make fruit juice? What enzyme is used to digest milk? Or lactose and milk? What enzyme is used to make baby food? And what enzyme is used in tanning leather? Now, enzymes can also be used in biological washing powders. So microorganisms produce the enzymes that digest complex carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. These enzymes are released outside the cells to break down their substrates. So bacteria and fungi are grown in these fermenters, and they produce the enzymes, which we use for biological washing powders. The fermentation process is very similar to that of penicillin. So you've got proteases, for example, which break down the colored and soluble proteins that cause stains, and it breaks them down into smaller colorless soluble polypeptides. And these work best at high temperatures. So you've got lipase. Lipase breaks down fats into fatty acids and glycerol. Protease digest protein, for example, egg, blood, to soluble amino acids. And cellulase can be used to break down the cellulose fibers and cotton, so you dislodge any dirt attached. The products of these enzymes can be washed away. Let's have a look at enzymes and temperature. Detergents work best at high temperatures. Enzymes are denatured at these temperatures. But you do have some bacteria that live in hot springs and they've got heat tolerant enzymes that are used in washing powders. Now it is more environmentally friendly to use detergents that work at low temperatures. So a few questions. How are enzymes used for biological washing powders? And what enzymes are used in biological washing powders? Right, the last topic is how are enzymes used in seed germination? Now when the conditions are suitable, a seed will take in water which will activate enzymes to digest large insoluble molecules into soluble molecules. And these soluble molecules will be absorbed and used for the seed as it grows, so as it germinates. So what happens? Well, you've got amylase is the enzyme that's secreted. It causes starch to break down into maltose, and then this maltose is absorbed. You do have other enzymes involved. You've got proteases, which break down proteins, and lipases, which break down fats. So seeds store starch, protein, and oils, and when the conditions are right for germination, the seed will take in water. The water will activate the enzymes and these will digest large insoluble molecules to small soluble ones that can be transported and used for the growing embryo. So the seedling uses the stored molecules until it can photosynthesize. So let's have a look at the enzymes involved in seed germination. You've got starch. What is the enzyme that is used to break down starch. It's amylase, and what is it broken down into? Maltose. Proteins are broken down by proteases into amino acids. Fats and oils are broken down by lipase into fatty acids and glycerol. A few questions. Which enzymes are used in seed germination? And why do the complex insoluble molecules need to be broken down? And that concludes our lesson. The end.